Hello and welcome back. It's great to see you. Um, today we're going to continue on our series about the things that keep the separated self in the illusion or the dream state. Um, go look at my last video and you will see the first three um, that I talked about. And today, today we're going to cover three more. My hope is that these these videos help you to understand how there is something going on other than this life that your character is living. Your character stays in a dream state. You understand? It stays in this fiction. And that fiction is valid for what it is, but it's not real. It is not real, right? But there's something else going on that I cannot explain to you. But the more that you can identify and see how your character is staying in the dream state, then you may, you may have an experience of something else. So today we're going to cover three more. Okay, so the first one today is the idea of when you need outer validation. I'm going to come back to that in a second because outer is a, a very interesting term. Um, so your character, I want to say this before we start. There's nothing wrong and there's nothing right about any of the things that we're talking about. Everything here is a guide. It's a guide. It's a pointer. It's like, oh, I might, things might go better if I adjust that thing. That's all. But it's not a bad thing. So having outer validation is not bad. We all know that when someone says, ah, you did a great job, that feels really good. When you get you know, an A on your report card, that feels great. There's nothing wrong with that. That is still in the dream. Do you understand? That's still in the dream. Nothing's wrong with being in the dream. But staying in the dream and real, not realizing it's a dream, now there is what we're talking about. So when we're looking for outer validation on a consistent basis for our parents to be proud of us, for my your friends to um, say you did a great job, to get the job, to um, whatever it happens to be. It could be a million different things. Um, for And all of that is very conditional. The reason that this keeps you in the dream state is that the dream state is duality. And duality is conditional, right? So it's always conditional. It's always either I'm going to win or I'm going to lose. I'm going to be in love or they're going to dump me, whatever happens to be. Duality is suffering. And the the character, not the truth, but the character of you is duality, is is duality. So when you're looking for outer validation, like I said, there's nothing wrong with it, but realize that that's what you're doing. Most of the time with all of these, when you realize it, you might go, hmm, do I want to do that? Hmm. So the first one is needing or constantly looking for some kind of outer validation. Now, really quickly, I want to say this, like I said before, anything that's not already here. So you might turn inside to get an answer. That doesn't seem like it's outer, but it still is because it's not of what is happening, right? It's not of what is happening. So you might do a pleading prayer and go inside and be like, I'm going to find the answer. I'm going to find the answer and find the answer. There's nothing wrong with that. But if this is conditional, like I will not, I will not be okay if I don't find the answer that I want. There it is, right? So just look at that every time that you look for outer validation. Okay, so number two is the idea of comparing. Now, you know this to be true. You know this to be true. And many times people can't help but compare themselves to other people, to other situations. You know, the grass is always greener, right? That kind of idea. So in the green, I got green right there. The grass is always greener, right? Because that's better than what's here. They are better than me. What they're going through is better than what's happening here. So this constant comparing is really, first of all, incredibly unhealthy. It brings up every insecurity in the separated self, and it doesn't help. It does not help anything at all. Now, like I said, nothing's wrong with it, but when... 
When you have a much more analytical mind in the dream state and you're comparing to learn something, to get better at something, to compare if you're learning the guitar and you watch a great guitarist and you're like, what are they doing that I'm not? Oh, oh there. That, there's nothing wrong with that at all. At all. But you're not equating, first of all, equating your value to, oh, I'm a horrible person because that that's Jimmy Page and I could never be like Jimmy Page. Do you understand? That's different. Comparing yourself to others, comparing your life to what it, this is big, what it could be, right? Oh, by the time I was 40, I was supposed to blah, 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 blah. And I'm only blah, 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 blah. So you're comparing it to your idea in your head. So number two is really important. You do it all the time in some way or another, right? People do this physically a lot. So number two that keeps you in the illusion is the idea of comparing. All right, so the last one we're going to go over today is doubt. Doubt keeps you in the dream state, right? When you think about, I'm just going to say this. I don't like to say this word, but you'll get it. The truth of what's really going on beyond your character, beyond your story, beyond your movie, and beyond everyone's character and movie, that is all the closest thing that I could say is limitlessness. It's pure potentiality. Everything is right and everything is wrong, but it's not really right and wrong. It is what it is. So there is no time, right? There's no beginning, middle, and end of time. There's no beginning, middle, end of your character's life. In the dream, there is, right? But when you start to doubt, when you start to doubt something, you, you take all possibility and you put it all the way down here. Make sense? I'm only, I can only have this much because I'm not a good person. Hmm. Um, I'll never get the job because only people that went to FIT, whatever happens to me, I don't care, <laughs> get those jobs, right? When you doubt that it's going to happen, this is so, this is very tough to, to talk about without talking about the opposite, which is trust, right? So a trust has to become developed. A trust in yourself, of course, not your character, but a trust in something, trust. And that means you're open to anything. That means you could succeed or you could fail, or whatever happens was exactly what was supposed to happen. That lowers your doubt. That lowers your doubt. Does it make sense? So doubt is really does keep you in because you're lo looking from small little um, a universe of your own lived reality. Your own lived reality is nothing, right? Right. So when you let go of doubt, it's kind of like you know Carrie Underwood. Jesus take the wheel. Let go. Let God. All that stuff. Okay? All right. Okay, great. Those are our three for today. The first one is, uh, i got to look at my notes here, needing outer validation. Number two is comparing yourself. And number three is doubting. So as usual, I want to give you a question for each of these that might help you to move into a different experience, right? So the first one is um, needing outer validation. So I want you to ask yourself, why? What is in me? What's happening that I seek validation from others or from the world? And how does that pursuit, that pursuit of seeking validation, it doesn't matter if it's all the time or if it's in one thing or another, how does that really impact your sense of who you are? Like I said, there's nothing wrong, nothing at all wrong with having validation from the outside. But if you're seeking it and you're needing it, that's what we're talking about. So the question is, why do I seek validation from others or an outside source? And how does that pursuit impact my sense of myself? Okay. 
All right, number two was um, comparing, right? Number two was comparing. So let's look at that. I have it written on my computer. That's what I'm looking over here. So in what ways do you compare yourself to others? And how does this affect your self-worth and personal growth about who you are? Everything is about your sense of self, right? The sense of self. The sense of self that you have now is a sense of self that's probably, is a, it, well, it is a fiction. It's a story, right? So in what exact specific ways does comparing yourself with others affect your self-worth and personal growth? How does that affect you? Immediately, you'll probably be like, it doesn't help. It, well, I don't want to give you any answers, but please get a pencil, write this down. This is why I give these at the end, right? So that's number two. Number three was uh, doubt. Doubt. Let me find that. Okay. So doubting yourself or doubting the world or doubting whatever. So here's the question. What are the core beliefs or fears that fuel your doubts? And how do these doubts hold you back from really living your life? What is the core? Because the doubt is always going to come from, I'm not good enough. This is a core belief. I'm not smart enough. Um, only people that went to, like I said, MIT or whatever, they get that. I'll, I'll tell you one really quickly, which is so funny. Um, I read something when I was really young. Listen, I'm five, six. I'm little. Um, I know you don't see that on there. Anyway, um, but I read somewhere successful people tend to be like 5'11 to six feet in general. And I remember reading that, I think it was in high school, and I was like, I'll never be successful. And that was in my head. And that became a belief. And no matter how much I tried to do anything, that little belief was saying, I would doubt my success. See, that belief created that. And then, and then all I had to do, this is a good one. All I had to do was find short people that were successful. And I suddenly went, well, that's bullshit. <laughs> that's a bullshit. Right? So let me say it again. What are the core beliefs or fears, they can be fears, that fuel your doubts? And how do those doubts hold you back from really living your life? Okay, I hope that that helped you, everybody. Um, please remember to subscribe and like and share with the little thumbs up. I'd really appreciate that. And please, if you would like to know more about me and make sure that you're subscribed here for sure, um, you can go to my Substack and I send out a, a new article written about a lot of these talks every week on Sundays. So there's a new article there, ways to work with me. Go to maxryan.net. If you are interested in doing some one-on-one -on -one, one work, I do that and I love doing it. I have great, incredible um, students. Um, so this is the second in the series. We're going to do three or four of these. So um, the next one will come out next week. So um, enjoy yourself. Have a good, wonderful rest of your day. I'll talk to you again soon.